In order to set the arm up, you're going to have to reprogram these servos. Each one needs a different ID number, and you also want to set up the center of the servo horn. There are two kinds of servo horns which attach to the servo. Don't lose any of these screws, by the way. The brass shaft at the top where the sticker is, is the driven side. And it uses a spline, which is a metal shaft with lots of teeth on it. 25 teeth, to be exact. And they, and they fit into a corresponding hole with the same number of grooves in the driven servo horn. On the opposite side, there's just a loose pivot. Pretty smooth, actually. Glass-filled nylon on aluminium, not a bad bearing. One of the screws in here is a stubby, large screw with a washer built in. That's for retaining this. You don't need to use it. If you do, it's going to make it harder to assemble everything else. So just keep that one to the side until you're ready to go. And then we want to program these. You're going to need an adapter board. It's going to be need to connect. You're going to need to connect it to power. Looking at about six volts. There's a nice amount to be testing with. The board by itself won't pull anything. There's no LEDs which light up when you turn it on. However, when you connect it to USB, I think one does come on, so let's find out. There we go. So with USB, LED comes on. You should have a computer connect to it. Before you can do that, follow the instructions and install the drivers. And then you will have a GUI pop-up, like so. I would do a screen capture, but it, <laughs> I can't get it to work with a normal, with a normal Xbox screen capture, I can't get it to work. That's what you're going to see. Servo plugs in. You can see the corners have been knocked off. So the servo plugs in this way. And then on the side where there are three pins, that's where the cable is. You can plug that in as well. So let's have a closer look at the connections to the adapter. Power goes on the same side as the servo connections. It's important that this is set to 5 volts. USB plugs in there. You plug everything as I just described. Start the GUI. And the default board rate, and the board rate is how often it sends digital bits, which make up the serial message, by default is incorrect. This needs to go to a million. You hit open. You get no feedback at all. When you search for servo list, the servo should pop up. If it doesn't, the things to check are to make sure that everything is plugged in, to make sure that the board has got power, you've turned your power supply on, and that the switch is set to five volts. And then also try restarting the GUI. Now, and that's just all you can do. <laughs> and just keep trying until it works. But the default, um, the default ID for all of the servos is one. So if we now connect a second servo and we try and search, it's going to get confused. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this one to six. The way you do that is you go to the second tab, which is programming. Go to the second tab, which is programming. Select the server you're interested in and it will automatically load all of the information. And you can see up here, this is ID one. We're going to set that to six and hit save. And now when we look back over here, we can see that the ID has changed. If we now plug in another server, so that we now have two servos daisy chained together, when you hit search, you're gonna see a one and a six. Servo one, and you'll see the ID is one again. Now we're gonna change this to five parameters saved successfully and now we have five and six over here and keep doing if you keep doing that eventually you will end up back at one again And the 
last one. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that corresponds to one, two, three, four, five, and six. And so you just want to write somewhere on there with a sticker or a tipex or scratch it or something, the number of each one. They used to provide a little sticker for it, but I don't think you do anymore. One. And if you want to see, to check how it's going to work, Come back here onto the debug tab, select servo one, not sure if you can see that very clearly, you can tune all the parameters in programming. Can change the P gains, the I gains, a lot of things can be changed. And if you change, if you select number two, this one will move instead. And the full range is 4095 to zero. So we're going to set all of them to 2048. And you can do that by doing a sync write. Which will make them all write to the same place. Okay, so now all your servers are labelled and they're all centred. Okay, now that our servos have got the IDs programmed and they've been labelled, not brilliantly easy to see, but you can just about manage it, we're going to set the servo horns up on all of them. All the servos are going to have the servo horns attached the same way. And that is so that the holes are horizontal and vertical. Not an angle like this, like that. As near as you can get it. There are 25 splines. So in the centre position you found, you'll better get somewhere reasonably near. Something like that. And the only other thing you need to make sure is that these push all the way down. And that's it. That's how you touch the server horn. You can then take a screwdriver and one of the screws and just tighten that in there. Repeat that for all of them. So if you take a look, you'll find that there are some screws like that, and those are the ones that go into the metal. There's some screws like that, and these are the ones which secure the servo through for plastic. And there are a few like that, and these are the ones we don't use. They have an extra washer and they can be used to secure these. You don't need it, the design will hold itself together. <laughs> 